So this is Jasper. I'm I'm speaking to you from a geotemporal vortex. I'm lost in in space and time. Um. I wanted to just send you some information from the vortex, um, from from the future, from the future, in which the gender roles have changed. I kind of feel like, I don't know, maybe, maybe um, creating situations, transversal movement. In a way, you are living different kinds of futures. That's my art. It's, it's, it's living, living a future, an al alternate future, which may or may not happen. It's the, the future of male lesbians. Um... So, I've been, like, rehearsing a lot of stuff in my head. Um, you know, what do you do? I've, I've constituted a male lesbian public. Um, the word has power. The word has power. Um, and it's something new because it's constituted outside of the LGBT, outside of traditional gender equality movements. Um, we can start over again. But anyway, what, one of the things that, the ways I, I think I've come to understand my experiences with gender, uh, gender transitioning, living as a woman, having a transsexual identity, trying out genderqueer and other things, um, <clears throat> is for me that the concept, Jürgen Habermas's public sphere um, and Michael Warner's working out of it in terms of you know, what can be public um, in the mass media, what can be public in the bourgeoisie versus what has to be bracketed, what has to be put into private, has to be put into other discourses, other... Um, that that I, I think this is where gender is inscribed. It's at this level. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and part of the thing is just this, this is absurd thing about how women, their bodies are part of the public. They're part of the public decoration. They're part of um, the landscape, in a way. They're publicized. <laughs> While men's bodies are, are considered private, men's bodies are hidden from view. Um, <laughs> there, there really is some uh, kind of thing of, of masculinity or male, some kind of abstraction without a body. But women's bodies, they're part of the discourse. They get talked about. They get looked at and talked about and represented. Men's bodies don't, <laughs> you know, and 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 it's almost forbidden. Um, I think a lot of of what I really consider femininity has to do with with uh, living in that world as public and taking control of. Sex appeal of using using that attention for your own means, um, using that publicity. So, so whereas perhaps um, the first second wave of feminism kind of said we want women's bodies to be private, just like men's. You know, we want want that. You know, I don't think it worked. Um, you got, you know, you give away the fruits of the publicity and don't get anything back. I, I think <laughs> the thing is that we all, all of our bodies need to be part of the publicity, part of the public. Um, <laughs> we, you know, men, men need to be, become corporeal. Um, and, and I represent a faction of men who want that. We want to, 
We want to be seen. We want to dress to please others. We want to to just overthrow these laws of what's public and private. You know, also including just like women's emotions and the sharing and conversations about emotions, being an emotional being. <laughs> that that's part of the public. And the emotional life of, of the, the man is not public. Um, I think that really fucks both men and women over. But it creates these differences in gender. So, it's, it's up to us male lesbians. Go to it. We can dissent... We can leave. We can create our own queer genders. We, we can change the world. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Um, and, and what really it takes is to become public, to come out of the closet, to tell those around you that you feel that way. We, we can't be represented if we hide. And, you know, just my experiences with male lesbian as a way of coming out, I, it works really well. Just don't use it with lesbians. Yeah, or expect to fight if you do. <laughs> you might be uh, pleasantly surprised, but probably not. Good night, sweeties.